I'm Billy Mills. You're on Native Ground. Brothers! What we do in life echoes in eternity. We were all Harjo, filmmaker, and I'm on Native Ground. Oh, nine. Native Ground, oh, nine. <laughs> Sundance Film Festival. I'm Laura Spencer, and you're on Native Ground. Hey, Native Ground, oh, nine. Hi, this is Bird Running Water, and you're on Native Ground. Well, I'm Trudy Styler, and I'm a human rights Native activist, and I'm married to Steve. I'm John Proudstar, and you are watching Native Ground. Hey, I'm Joe Berlinger, and you're on Native Ground. You rock. They're the max. You're on Native Ground. The name is Wes Studi. My name is Kerry Fukunaga, and I'm on Native Ground. I'm Nick Ortiz, and I'm with... Tess Myers. Okay, we're doing a star search, trying to look for somebody famous. You're on Native Ground. Hi, my name is Paulina, on Native Ground. Hey, this, what's up, this is Chris Rock, and you're on Native Ground. You're our inspiration, you're our hope for the future. Hi, I'm Carly Kohler, I'm on Native Ground, and this is... Richard Ray Whitman. And what do you want um, the audience to get from that movie that we just saw, the documentary that we just saw? Well, I just think, you know, history, um, too often, uh, Indian history gets lost in the greater American history story. And uh, I would say for this film, I just came from the screening as well, uh, it's history alive uh, in the sense of memory, memory alive. Uh, we're very much a part of American history, but we're also very much a part of our Indian history. And so I think it's important. Uh, too often, uh, our generations don't know what happened 10 years ago, or 20 years ago, and myself included in that mission. So um, how long were you at the Wounded Knee Resistance? Well, you know, the Wounded Knee happened in the 70s, and it was, uh, I'm a product of the 60s, you know, and so I think it was a different time, uh, obviously, of, uh, uh, of activism, uh, awareness, um, the Vietnam War, um, the Nixon, the politics. Uh, so it was a very dynamic time, music, culture. So it was, a, it was a, a different time of a cultural awareness, especially for American Indians as well, the civil rights movement. So a very dynamic time in terms of music, culture, counterculture, if you will. So, uh, so I think it's a very important for uh, young people or for generations to um, know that they're a part of this history. And, and yourself and, and your, your fellow traveling companions and your, your chaperones and people who are traveling with you. Um, so you, we make history at this very moment you are as well. Um, what do you want um, young people to learn about Wundini? Well, I think um, Wundini, in terms of history, is context of history is always important. And sometimes our history is left out of textbooks, are the official U.S. history. And too often, our Indian history or experiences have been left out, admitted, uh, edited out, uh, intentionally left out. And so I think for the education process, we have to educate, educate ourselves for the most part. Uh, oral tradition within our tribal languages, our elders, so much of our history is oral an oral tradition, which we should be proud of. But it's also dependent on the written word as well, how one interprets history, how one presents history. Or the question could be, who owns history? We own our history, and we have to speak to that. So I think that I think the Munini can, uh, it's just not about politics, but it's about compassion. It's about each generation coming forth to their time. That was my time at that time, I think. I was your age as well. How did you feel when you were at Wounded Knee? Well, you know, I mean, uh, I was uh, <clears throat> young, confused, angry. Uh, but I, I learned through my experience, I think I learned to channel my energy or my negativity or my anger to challenge, to channel my anger, to use it and not let my anger be self-defeating. Too often I think we internalize our pain and our anger and so, but I, but I know that Indian people we have, especially our young generations, we're seeing this uh, phenomenon called intergenerational 
grieve and it's that we have to begin to deal with we're the products of it uh, of what went on before us is part of us um, were you disappointed with, at the end of Wounded Knee when they um, left without having the terms of their treaty met, the Lakota? Well, of course, it was you know, obviously a very disappointment uh, for the, once again, the government uh, backing down from their agreement part, you know. Indian people, our history is that our, our Indian people, our elders, have always held to, stayed fast to the agreements they enter with the government. Uh, never have we, our peoples, tribes, and nations, broken the treaties. We've always held steadfast to our our part of the treaty-making process. But the government, so it was another, when he added on to another long series of, of those broken promises. But no, so much for disappointments, you know, not to be philosophical, but disappointments are, are human disappointments. Humans make agreements and we break them as humans. Our own shortcomings are. So the disappointment is just a human disappointment. The, the greater thing is to do something larger than the disappoint, disappointment. And I think Indian people have you know, from that disappointment. We continued on. So very, very moving for me to see a lot of the people in the, the archival footage, newsreel footage. A lot of those people are, have gone on, you know, past time. And, so uh, I would just uh, echo saying that each generation comes forward to their time, you know, and that's what I would close with.